Right everyone, we're Fletcher here. Right, this is going to be a tutorial on how to make a little mini folding wood burning stove. You can buy these, but this will be a version you can make yourself. So these are the, the designs, quite simple. Just a big opening on one side. That's the base plate, so that just have holes. And it's also the top plate with a big square cut out. That's one of the sides. Actually, that's both the sides. So all you're really going to need are some tin snips, a punch, possibly a nail, some hinges. I'm going to use a piano hinge and some kind of metal. And I'm going to use some baking trays. You're going to want enough for the sort of six sides, four sides and the top and bottom. You may also need a hammer and some other tools, a couple of other things of vice. So you want, this is how you want to cut out the design, so cut it out like that for the base plate and then the sides you want to just cut them out like that. But you could design your own, you know, this will just be, a, this will show you the whole process how to easily make it. I was originally going to make it with some slightly stronger metal but uh, I didn't have it so the baking trays will do. They're obviously good enough for heating, you know, for being heated. So the first thing to do is just cut off the rims of the cut off the rims of the baking trays. It'll just make it easier when you put it when you put the designs on. It'll make it easy just to draw them and then cut those out. So get all three of your baking trays and cut the rims off. As for the sort of price of how much this is costing me to make, nothing at all. Everything I'm using is either sort of rubbish stuff, stuff that's going to be chucked away. So it's a good way to make stuff from sort of recycled materials. So there's all the bits cut out, all the rims cut, up, cut off. It should make it a lot easier to put the design on now. You're going to need a pencil. I use a permanent marker, it's the easiest thing to do. So you want to just mark round the edges of these two like this and cut them out. One thing though, don't cut out that bottom bit yet. Just cut it out as one big rectangle, which I'll just show you at the end of this little section. But uh, yeah, I've marked it like that, but don't cut that bit out yet. This is what I mean. Cut straight along for now. And we will cut that bit out, but it's easier just to do it like this for now. So cut your two rectangles out, or all of them actually. But um, I'm just doing these two for now. One thing you may need is gloves. I've got quite a few little cuts doing this. Nothing bad, but a lot of little scratches and that, you know, from the edges. It's alright once you've cut it out. See, it's like the corners of the off cuts and that. Cut your fingers a little bit. But like I said, nothing bad, just little scratches. So there is all four sides cut out. Don't take long, tin snips cut through this really easily. One other thing I forgot to mention, this whole process is gonna be with hand tools. There's not gonna be a single power tool in this. So now this is just the uh, base plates and the top bit, the grill sort of bit. Don't, yeah, so you want to cut this one out as one big rectangle and then we'll cut out those bits later. You can see what I mean. So there's the bit for the bottom and the bit for the top. So now we'll mark out so that we can cut out the slots to take those two bits and then the vent holes. So the easiest thing to do this with is just a nail and a hammer. and. All you want to do is just mark the edges of each bit. So the slots, just mark both edges. You'll see what I mean. And then for each of the vent holes, just put a mark in the middle of each of those. And then, like I said, because we're not going to use any power tools, the easiest thing to do this with is a chisel to make the slots and a punch to punch the holes up don't need to drill it this metal is soft enough 
that you can just punch the holes through. Like I said, I was originally going to use something a little bit thicker, but this will do. Right, so there's all the holes marked. Now we'll just use a chisel to do the slots. If you can get the perfect size chisel, you won't need to move it along like I do. And these first ones, I'll just chisel it out. But later on when I do the other one, I'll show you a little technique to fold over the edges. I was sort of learning as I went with this. I was just doing it as I went along. And I noticed on the second one that you could sort of fold over the edges to make a neater edge and a slightly stronger edge. So we'll do that with quite a lot of this now. For each bit, that you can you're going to not cut it right off you're going to fold it and then that creates a, a stiffer bit but yeah there's the start of one of the slots and you can just you can go around the back of it and hammer it over then you want to do the bottom ones and then we'll do the holes in a minute so just with a punch just just pretty much punch straight through until you, you know, just keep punching through, hitting through. Not on a piece of wood. You want to do this on a vice, which I'll show you now. Because you're going to need the the punch to go down at least an inch and a half. You just have the vice slightly open. You can do this on anything with a bit of a hole, to be honest. You know, table with a hole in it. As long as you can get the punch down to about an inch and a half, you know, or whatever, you know, wherever it gets to its limit. So just carry on doing that till you've done all of them. And then that's the vent hose done. So now we're just going to cut out that little bit at the bottom. So do it on the outer side of the line. Like that, don't do the long bit, just do the two and then fold it over and then that just creates a bit of a stiffer part there. So fold it over, you could just fold it over your hand to get a bit of a neater edge, flatten it down with a hammer and that just makes that little bit a bit more stiffer. Because you could just cut it off but yeah that just adds a little bit of stiffness to it. So there's the slots, there's the holes. Yeah, and you see there, I've bent it over. But I'll actually show you how I did that on the next one. And I also did it on this one. So, to do this, you want to mark in slightly, not right on the edge. But you want to mark in so that you can use the bigger punch and that will reach to the edge of this line, if you know what I mean. You'll see in a second. Now, like I said, I was just doing this as I went along. So, at first, I was going to try and cut it out with the tin snips. But I realised it wasn't going to work. And then I had a better idea. So, for three of the edges, I folded it over. But for one, I didn't. But you'll see in a minute. So, now you want to just punch where those four holes are. Ready to, to chisel. I, like I said, you'll see me try to um, do it the tin snips first. But it doesn't really work. I was going to try and tin snip it, but you just can't get them in. So then I thought, oh, I'll just cut it out straight. Then I realised there was a better way, as I did for the three other edges. <clears throat> so I tried to tin snip, so it won't go in. And then I thought, oh, this is the way to do it. So you want to cut it in like that. Ignore the one edge where I've already done it because I can't do it there now anyway, but Ignore that side so you just want to chisel in like that there down along down along Little front the little square bit comes out and then we can fold those edges over it will create a neat edge and It will stiffen it up again So I just put it in the vise up to the edge of that those holes and then just either push it over your fingers or like this I did it with a chisel 
and then hammer it flat. <clears throat> One good thing with this kind of metal, it's easy to work with as well. You could do this with like thick steel if you wanted to, but uh, doing it with this kind of metal, <clears throat> you can do it all completely by hand. Edge is slightly bent there, but just hammer that flat again. It's easy enough. And there you go. Nice and flat. Those edges are all nice and smooth and not sharp either because it's just folded over metal. So then we'll just do the bottom bit again. Cut on the outside edge, fold it up. So it's very easy. Like I said, there's no power tools in this whole process. You just have all those folds on the inside where it's all going to be burnt anyway. You know. So then we just do one, that was the other side, so that's just the blank one, which is the opposite side of the hole, and then you just want to do another slots and holes again for the other side of that. So this is where I, this is what I'm going to show you how to do the slots. So you want to chisel in with the curved edge facing away from you, and it will create a little lip sticking outwards which you'll see in a minute hopefully if not you should un you should be able to understand what I mean yeah you see the lips look and then you can fold those over with the chisel so now I just stick the chisel in and I'm folding them away from me ready to now flatten with the chisel so I just lay the chisel on it and I just tap that with a hammer and then that creates a tiny little folded over edge. Perfect for that. Makes those nice neat slots. You know, there's probably other ways you could do this. But I was just doing this pretty much as I went along. So now I'm just folding over the other side. Yeah, and that's that done. So then you punch out all the other holes. So... That is all of the sides done. Two vented sides with the slots, the one windbreaker side and then the one side to feed the wood in. So now we're going to do the base plate and the sort of grill plate bit. So I'm just trying to find mine now. So you want to, I think we're going to do the base plate first, the bit where the actual wood burns on it. So you just want to go around all of those holes, marking the centres of them, ready to punch those through. And this metal's quite soft, it marks really easily. Just mark round. And you don't need to do that many holes, or you could, don't have to do them that size, you could do them bigger, you could do more of them, you could do less of them. You know, whatever you think will work. I've spaced them out about an inch each, I think. And then we'll punch those through in a second, and then we'll cut out the little tabs, fold the bits over next to them. Right, so there's that ready. So now I just punch all those through with a punch on the vice. Now we're going to mark the, we're not even going to mark it, you just hold the, the easiest way to do this is hold the paper on where it, where it needs cutting and then just cut straight through with the tin snips. And afterwards, when you offer it up, you may need to adjust it just by making them slightly smaller, you know, just cut a bit more off. But this is good enough for now. Yeah, so just cut it with the paper on, cut the two little edges off completely, they'll come off, and then the middle one, you want to just fold over, I hadn't actually stamped out the bits yet, but um, they're all marked ready, so there you go, fold it over, add a little bit of rigidity to it, and then do the other side, then punch out the holes, so there's that, that's the base plate done, where you're going to do the burning, that'll feed some air into it, hopefully. So then, to do the 
top plate bit where the flange will actually come out. We're going to do it similar to the side one. Mark the four corners and then we'll chisel out like this. I'll draw it quite badly when I do this bit, you know, it's just quick. But you can see what I mean. So, do it a bit neater than that. But then chisel out so the square comes out the middle. So, if it don't come out, just cut it out. But, uh, that's not important anyway. Then you fold those edges over so you get really nice edge to it. And then it adds a bit of rigidity to it again. So that's all your sides done. That's your sides and the top and bottom done. Now you want to cut the hinges. Now again, I don't use any power tools for this. I use to cut these some bolt croppers and the tin snips. The bolt croppers just cut the <coughs> middle bit. You won't be able to do with the tin snips, and the tin snips just do the rest. So mark them to length. The good thing with these piano hinges, they go the whole length, so they add a nice bit of strength. So I just use the bolt croppers to just clip that bit in the middle. Doesn't cut right through, because it just seems to bend it, but it cuts that bit enough that you can then cut through with the tin snips. So that's that done, and then with the sort of rounded hinge bit in the inside, in a bit, you'll see what I mean. They need to fold inwards, not outwards. So then mark <coughs> the holes, and then we're going to punch it through with the punch, just so it's the same size as those holes in the hinges, and then I was going to use rivets but you could use bolts whatever you wanted to the only problem i had is my all of the rivets i had was too long but um it didn't really matter i just had to uh hammer them flat and i did i think really i should have done it the other way around from that, the way i did it with the the rivets in i had them coming out if you know what i mean should have had them the other way to this would have looked a little bit neater but doesn't really matter and there's the that's the head after i've hammered it down because they're so long <clears throat> but you'll see in a minute i actually do one to show you and those rivet guns you can get for like five or six quid i think yeah i should have had it the other way around really it would have been a neater edge but but then saying that i think i did have a reason it may be because if you had those knobbly bits on the inside the it wouldn't fold shut as much so then just get a hammer if you've got big rivets like mine just get a hammer and hammer them flat it doesn't matter in fact it makes a bigger end to hold so so there's all four edges done now with the rivets yeah with actually i think i probably did it the right way if you think about it those rivets being flat on the inside makes it fold flatter camera ran out there and I was just going to try the bit inside it <clears throat> but it does go and then lastly on the last edge I put two bolts as like a clasp and then I was going to put some wing nuts on but to be honest you don't need them so I'll just show you now just slot the bottom bit in into the slots and then in the other side and you can actually shut it and then you can get the top in without it open You can just sort of pull them out a little bit. And that's it done, really. You know, what I'll do later, I'll eventually take this down the woods and actually try and cook something on it. Yeah, and then the, the other hinge, it just goes on to those two bolts that you had. But that, you could do the clasp any way you want, but I just chose to do it this way because it'd be the easiest way. There, look. And that's it done. You know, you may need to do a little bit of adjusting here and there. Clean it up. <clears throat> It'll soon be burnt anyway, so. 
But yeah, if you want to make these kind of things, they're easy to make. It probably only took a couple of hours to make the whole thing completely by hand, no power tools at all. That's the best thing about it. Don't need a single power tool. So then I'll just give it a little bit of a test now. There's the, that's the designs, to, I thought I'd use them. A little bit of wood out of my shed. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm saying how you really like these, but I'm, this seemed to work. Put it in this way, let it burn down a little bit. I've got some wood shavings. But yeah, I'll do some proper demos soon. I'll do a full, I'll do, I'll boil some water on it. See how long it takes to boil some water. Or possibly even cook something. Yeah, you know, like I said, it was easy to make. You could do this from thicker steel if you wanted to. I made it from baking trays because that's all I had. Because my plan was actually to make it from something completely different. Some thicker steel, but when I came to look, I didn't have any. So you just light it like this. Now when it gets burning properly, you can feed sticks in from the side once you've got something on the top. It seems to work well. Like I said, I'll do some proper tests soon. I'll try and cook something on it. You know, and if you got it so hot that the... I highly doubt this would happen, but if the rivets somehow melted, you could always just put bolts through there anyway, steel bolts. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it seems to work alright, and it's, it's sort of copied off of ones I've seen anyway, so it should work alright. Like I said, I'll cook something on it next time, or take it down the woods, you should see it get used. May even make a little pouch for it. Doesn't fold up completely flat into just the five inch square, but you can have it like a 10 inch long bit. 10 inch long, fl very flat thing. <clears throat> I don't mean that's the only thing I didn't show in this video, it being flat. Didn't think to do that. Yeah, that's it. Just show you it quickly. Sides, windbreaker side. That's the door side, I suppose. Feed inside. Yeah, oh, it worked quite good. Very cheap, you know, just old baking trays. Yeah, that's about it. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it helpful, and I hope you find this tutorial helpful. See you later. Right, before you leave, if you ever wanted to support this channel, you can now via Patreon or by shopping at Amazon.com and Gearburst. There's more info below if you need that. Remember, if you want to get full notifications for this channel, click the bell. And uh, I'll see you later. Cheers.